Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. In the last episode, we got all of our prep work done, which means it is time. It is time to begin the War Summit of Priority Sir Kesh. I, I think this is going to go terribly. <laughs> I think this is going to go horrifically wrong. It'd be too easy if it went perfectly. And oh, hello. Hell. Um, there's no ring. There's no ring. Hello, Pieto. Pieto, a carbonaceous asteroid, became notable for element zero deposits. The deposits, which indicate it was an extrasolar capture, were discovered by the Solarians before they found the mass relay in the Pranus system. Naturally, all element zero was mined out long ago. The asteroid is named for the clan of Pyto II Ginon Mal Anest Dut Solem Amar, known to humans as Amar Solem. This shy, retiring eccentric was an undergraduate when more, when more important astrogeologists passed off the first ESO deposits to him. He ran the fateful test that discovered its mass-affecting properties. For three centuries after his death, rival clans fought for credit for the discovery, but the truth won out after a lengthy academic war. Orbital distance, 7.3 AU. Orbital period, 19.8 Earth years. Radius, 1,681 kilometers. Day length, 29.3 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 154 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.126 G. Well, I'm, I'm gonna have to search the rest of the asteroid field. If I don't, I'll get suspicious. <laughs> Anything else? Anyone else? Doesn't look like it. Okay, no. Good stuff. Okay, what do we have here? Ooh. I would assume that'd be juice, like beetle juice, maybe? Hail juice. Spacer investors are fond of saying that you can't exhaust a gas giant, but the Solarians have certainly tried. Hail Juice is home to a thriving community of robo miners and those who work in helium-3 collection and refinement. More than 16 of Hail Juice's more metallic moons have been settled. The giant bears the name of the Hail Juice Corporation, which combined the best efforts of several Solarian clans to manufacture the advanced shielding necessary to colonize the planet's moons. The planet's magnetosphere retains massive amounts of radioactive ions from Pranus, the system's star. Because of this, the cities on the moons are subsurface, protected from lethal radiation levels by shielding and thick layers of rock. Hail juice was bought out centuries ago, but the name endures as a symbol of Solarian innovation and cooperation. Colony founded 560 BCE. Population 129,000. Capital AFA. Orbital distance 3.6 AU. Orbital period 6.8 Earth years. Radius 54,743 kilometers. Day length 16.8 Earth hours. And over yonder we have Dragal. The tiny rock planet Dragal is notable for its status as a strategic reserve of heavy metals. It has been warmed slightly by a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and carbon monoxide, but otherwise remains hostile to life. In the clandestine fashion typical of Solarians, a military outpost orbits the planet, but does not appear on Alliance star maps. Like Saradril, Dragal is named for the matrilineal clan that sent the first manned mission to the planet's surface. However, a thriving minority from the Silar clan, who sent the first manned mission to orbit the planet, insists to this day that their landing attempt was sabotaged by the Dragals, and the planet should bear their name. 
Relations between the two clans remains tense. Orbital distance, 1.9 AU. Orbital period, 2.5 Earth years. Radius, 1,528 kilometers. Day length, 16.2 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, trace. Surface temperature, negative 37 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.15 G. Then you, Sir Kesh. The Solarian homeworld has been likened to the jungles of Earth. Pretty to look at, teeming with life, uncomfortable to live in, and dangerous to the unwary. The technophilic Solarians had significant pollution and waste problems early in the development of their society. They also embraced social solutions just as quickly, and through complex breeding rules, Sir Kesh now maintains a crowded but sustainable population. The planet tends to be wetter than Earth, and Solarian cities spare no expense to collect and provide fresh water, as one might expect from an amphibious species. Due to Sir Kesh's location in the galaxy, far from dark space, it has yet to be invaded by the Reapers, but its rulers are all too aware that they are in the path of attack. Because they could not strike the first blow, as their military doctrine suggests, many already consider their forces at a severe disadvantage. Population, 10.3 billion. Population, orbital stations, 1.1 million. Orbital distance, 1.1 AU. Orbital period, 1.2 Earth years. Radius, 6,709 kilometers. Day length, 21.5 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 1.42 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 25 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.94 G. And last, but by no means least, Saradrill. Sir Kesha's sister planet is in a weak hothouse state, retaining enough carbon dioxide and monoxide to form an atmosphere thicker than a garden world's, but thinner than a true hothouse like Venus. In the early days of Solarian space exploration, the species saw mining the planet as an engineering challenge. When the Solarians made contact with the Asari, the robo-mining industry developed for planets like Saradril quickly became the galactic standard. The planet is named for the Saradril clan, specifically the Solarian Delatras Saradril II Sorison Mal Netya Partornura, who sponsored the first manned mission to the planet. In antiquity, the planet was named for various gods, as well as the astronomer who first classified it as a planet rather than a star. But Nura's political machinations won out, and the planet now bears her clan's name on all standards about that's a lot of S's. That's a lot of S's, pardon me. But Nora's political machinations won out, and the planet now bears her clan's name on all standard Solarian star maps. Orbital distance, 0.6 AU. Orbital period, 0.5 Earth years. Radius, 5,243 kilometers. Day length, 22.2 Earth hours. Atmospheric pressure, 8.45 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature, 325 Celsius. Surface gravity, 0.71 G. Lovely. Okay, the diplomatic ships. The diplomatic ships of the Solarians, Taurians, and Krogan float far away from one another, out of weapon range. Messages sent by each faction indicate that they would welcome the Normandy as a neutral meeting ground for their diplomats. The fact that they have not agreed on a ship to serve as a neutral meeting point before now does not bode well for the negotiations. And here comes Naomi, who has no expertise as a diplomat. Commander, the Salarian Dalatras and Krogan clan chief are ready to come aboard. Have them brought to the conference room. And hope this doesn't start another war. The Krogan is in no position to make demands. The Krogan has a name. Erdnot Rex. And I'm not just some junkyard varin you unleash whenever you're in trouble. I've got my own problems. Reaper scouts have arrived on Tuchunka. So why should I care if a few Turians go extinct? Trying to draw out negotiations will get you nowhere, Rex. I have no time for it. 
Just tell us what you want. I'll tell you what I need. A cure for the genophage. Absolutely not. The genophage is non-negotiable. Oh my god, Rex! Oh, buddy, hi! Um, oh, I, I have a few thoughts. Um, one, is this... Is this the first time we've seen a female Salarian? I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Salarian counselor is a dude, or at least they, they have a, a masculine sounding voice. I think this is the first time we've encountered uh, a female Salarian. Hello there. Also, I was about to say, Naomi, you can't attend this in a hoodie. No, she, she went, she put on her military blues. Good girl. There you go. Smart thinking. Oh, I, I know what Naomi is saying. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Um, what's what's your concern? Um, I I will admit there are legitimate concerns about the Krogan. They breed so quickly. You know, they they did wage war on the galaxy, and they very nearly won. Like, I'm, I'm not saying, and I don't think that Naomi would claim either, that the Krogans were innocent victims in all of this. They never did anything bad. They didn't deserve the genophage at all. Like, no. No, they fucked up. The Krogans absolutely fucked up. Just like the Salarians fucked up. But the Salarians weren't punished, were they? The Salarians haven't had to suffer in the same way that the Krogans suffer for how, how many centuries now? How many? It's, it's not like it's just been like five years. It's not like that. It's been going on for quite a while. I think, I don't think that Naomi particularly likes the Salarians, to be brutally honest. Again, the, the Krogan got punished. Rightly so. The Krogan should have been punished. Not necessarily with, you know, a, a disease that makes everyone miscarry. Maybe not that much of a punishment. But the, the Krogan's fucked up. They have been punished. The Salarians fucked up. They're still on the council. Happy as Larry. Large as life. Not suffering in the slightest. I think... Yeah, I, I th this, this is a summit. We are supposed to be here for, you know, like, this is a neutral ground. We should hear her out, but we're absolutely going to ignore her. 100. I'm, I'm with you, Rex. I'm with you, Rex. But, like, we, in, in the, you know... You know, for fairness sake, we should hear her out, even if we are going to ignore her. Why are you so opposed to the idea, Dalatras? Because my people uplifted the Krogan. We know them best. You mean you used us to fight a war you couldn't win? It wasn't the Salarians or the Asari or even the Turians that stopped the Rachni. It was Krogan blood that turned the tide. And after that, you ceased to be useful. The Genophage was the only way to keep your urges in check. Dalatrash, you may not like him, but Rex is right. Insulting him won't change that. I won't apologize for speaking the truth. We uplifted the Krogan to do one thing, wage war. It's all they know because it's all we wanted them to know. Gee, I'm... <sighs> Again, Naomi is just like, more, more reasons to hate the Salarians. <laughs> to be fair, Morden was a good dude. Morden was a good dude, this bitch. <laughs> then you cease to be useful. I, they're people. They're people. They're not a hammer or a rake. They're not a tool that you put down after use. They are people. They are people, and you use them, and you fuck them over, and you have not had any repercussions from that, or at least none that have been shown. If if there are some repercussions for the Salarians, and it's shown in the comics or the books, okay, that's great. I've never read the comics or the books. I can't speak for them. All I can speak for is what the game has shown us, and the game has shown us that the Salarians didn't have to deal with jack shit. The Salarians uplifted the Krogan, and then, oh, oh God, we, this, this race that breeds really quickly is breeding really quickly. How could we ever have known that? Oh, we're the smartest people in the galaxy? We're the scientists? Oh, sh 
Wh whoopsie! Like, <laughs> mega miscalculation. Mega miscalculation. Your people should have thought the matter through then. Was it really a surprise the Krogan revolted? That's precisely my point, Commander. We made a rash decision. We turned to the Krogan in desperation. It's the same mistake you're about to make today. No good can come from curing the genophage. They deserve a cure. At this stage, at this st this isn't even punishment anymore. This is just psychological torture. That's all you are doing here. This is no longer punishment. The Krogan have paid for their mistakes. The genophage has gone on long enough. 1,476 years, if you're keeping track. It was a thousand years of peace, free from these brutes. Enough! Whether or not they deserve a cure is academic. It would take years to formulate one. My information says otherwise. A Solarian scientist, Malin, grew a conscience. He was on my planet, testing a cure on our females. I remember. His methods were barbaric. But what you didn't know is that other females survived his experiments. So the Dalatress here sent in a team to clean up the whole mess and to take them prisoner. Where did you get this? It, it could be a fabrication. Don't insult me. Those are my people. They're immune to the genophage, and you're going to give them back. Dalatras, is this true? How will curing the genophage benefit my people? Um, tell me we can meet them. I want to see female Krogans. I want to see female Torians too. We've never seen one of those. I, oh my God. It could be a fabrication. No, I. Question, question. We were repeatedly offered the chance to punch Kalisa Al Jelani, I think that was her name. Why can't we punch the Dalatras? <laughs> we could repeatedly punch a lady for doing her job. Why can't we punch the Dalatras for doing the same? She's doing her job right now. It adds, seems to be Shepard's MO, punching ladies who are doing their jobs. I just, I, this is, this is bullshit. <laughs> Madam, <laughs> Madam, um, how will curing the genophage benefit my people? Um, uh, I, I, I would like an option to say, uh, well, curing the genophage will mean I won't come after you for not doing it, but no. Um, I, I, let's try, bite your tongue. Bite your tongue, just deal with this lady so, so that we can get what we need. Um, if the Krogans join the war, that's more people to help fight the Reapers. Which is beneficial. How long do you think you'll last alone against the Reapers? Because if you don't help, that's how it'll end up. And I'll be the last friendly Turian you ever see. What's it gonna be? The females are being kept at one of our STG bases on Sirkesh. But I warn you, Commander. The consequences of this will be will be nothing compared to what happens if the Reapers win. Let's get the females. You're not setting foot on Sirkesh. This will take time. It happens now. As a Council Spectre, Shepard can oversee the exchange. We're going. I won't forget this, Commander. A bully has few friends when he needs them most. I'm s- I- oh. I- I- Breathe. Remember to breathe, Callista. A bully has few friends when he needs them most. I'm sorry, what would you call forcing miscarriages and stillbirths on an entire race for over a thousand years? What would you call that? I'd call that bullying behavior. I'd- I'd say that that fits. I'd- we didn't punch her, but at least we could just say, like, oi, zip it, sit your ass down. Um, oh. I didn't, Rex said, let's go get the females. His, 
if Rex is coming with us, we should bring Garrus and Liara. Because they, they all travel together in the first game and be like old times. Go on. Yeah, if, I, I hope Rex is there. I hope Rex is coming along. Okie doke, guns are all sorted out. Um, we have... Okay, so we have five points. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm good to hold on to them. Garrus, buddy, you have four. Let's... Let's get some more concussive shot for you, buddy. Lovely. And Liara, let's get a little bit more warp. There we go. This is the Solarian homeworld we're headed to. They aren't used to seeing Krogan here, so let's keep it simple. We land, get the females, and leave before anyone changes their mind. I still don't trust a word they say. Oh, I... To be fair, just because the Dalatras was being a bitch doesn't mean that they're going to be a bitch. I mean, if... I'd say be friendly to a point. <laughs> I, I definitely think that Naomi is going to be on guard here, but, like, un until these people do something, you know, benefit of the doubt, Naomi always gives people a chance. Let diplomacy play out, Rex. You'll get what you want. These females are the best and probably last hope for my people. We'll bring them back, Rex. Don't worry. I appreciate that, Liara. I wouldn't want anyone else along for the ride. <coughs> I suppose I can make room for you too, Garrus. <laughs> Figured you'd gone soft sitting on your throne. Forgot how to hold a gun. Commander, I have the Solarian base on sensors. Set her down. Commander, Solarian ground control says we don't have clearance to land. Tell them the Dalatras authorized this herself. I knew they'd never keep their word. Let's see them try to stop a Krogan airdrop. Rex? No! We have an unauthorized landing. And who authorized you to hold my race hostage? <laughs> I always forget that Rex has biotics. I always forget about that. Um, I, oh. I get, let's, let's just try and be peaceful. Try and be peaceful. I'd like to avoid a diplomatic incident. As would we. But you have something valuable to Rex. Something worth dying for. This matter can be resolved, but I must insist he remain under guard. <laughs> Oh. I mean, let's be honest, he could probably fuck them up real good. <laughs> Yet there are more of there are more of the Salarians, but Rex is Rex. I can't exactly blame them for being scared of him. He is terrifying. Just let's let's keep everyone nice. Everyone be nice. I can handle this, Rex. If anything goes wrong and all bets are off. I'm Paddock Wicks, and I appreciate your understanding, Commander. With war on everyone's minds, our people are on edge. Two 
careful! Watch the containment shield! I'd hope to never see one of those again. As you can see, this base contains sensitive information. Why do you have... Why do you have the Balrog looking fucker? I've forgotten what their... What is it? Yog, there we go! I mean, Balrog isn't too far off, but like, why? Why do you have one of those? I don't like it. Um... Oh, I... Um, I am with Rex, like, the, the first sign of danger, all bets are off. The first sign of betrayal... I'm gonna shoot everyone, but for right now, let's try and be polite. Tell me about this sensitive information. What kind of work goes on here? Evolutionary trials, morphological simulations, exogenetic assessments. Nothing is ever simple with Solarians, is it? Science has always been our best defense. The research we do here has kept Sirkesh safe for millennia. I, d I don't like... I don't like that they're talking about evolutionary experiments and they've got a yarg. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we learn at the end of Lair of the Shadow Broker, the yarg was doing research into Reapers and Liara was surprised by that because I, I think there was some mention of like, oh, the Reapers have been leaving the yarg alone. Something along those lines. Because they're pre-space flight. They're pre-space flight. They're not a particularly advanced society, or at least not as advanced as everyone else. And so the the former shadow broker was like, he was he was doing something. He was doing something. And that might have been why he was working with the collectors, trying to get on the Reapers' good side. Something along those lines. No, it wouldn't have been the Reapers. It would have been the collectors. The collectors have left the Yarglan. I can't remember. It's been too long. <laughs> It's it's been too long. I can't remember, but I I don't like because this I'm 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 just like it's happening again. It's happening again. They have a pre-space flight, you know, civilization species, and they're saying, "Oh yeah, we're doing evolutionary experiments here." I'm like, isn't that kind of what you did with the Krogan? You had a pre-space flight civilization and then you started meddling with them. I'm like, I don't, I, I, uh, just, just, where, where are the Krogan ladies? Tell me where they are. I'm taking them. Does that include studying lost Krogan? The females were in poor health when we found them on Tachanka. They were brought here to stabilize their condition. This whole planet smells wrong. I'd like to see them. Of course. I'll need to clear you for the lower levels. Give me a few moments and meet me near the elevator. Attention biolabs. Please prepare for yard specimen arrival. I I I uh, I don't like this. <laughs> I I am suspicious. I'm very suspicious. This is where all you Solarians come from, huh? No wonder you're so soft. Too busy writing poetry about waterfalls. <laughs> Shepard. I don't like this. I should be the one going in. How about you stay here and we only fight one war at a time? That was just good old-fashioned Krogan hot air. If it had been real, they'd be dead. Yeah, how, how exactly did you get that footage? Who tipped you off about the females here? Sorry, Shepard, but they're listening to every word we say. I prefer my Solarian liver served raw. <laughs> Besides, do you think this is the kind of thing the Shadow Broker would have known about? Too bad I don't know him or her. I'm sure the Broker was very busy. Whoa. Back on the Normandy, you said Reapers were sighted on Tachanka. Clans Jorgal and Ravador sighted a few landing parties. But Reapers are up to something. Tuchunka may be a pile of radioactive rubble, but it's our pile. And we'll fight the last Krogan to keep it that way. That's what I always liked about you, Rex. My smoldering good looks? <laughs> there is that. But you've never given up. And that determination's about to pay off. Yeah. Who would have thought back on Vermeer we'd be standing here doing this together? 
I'm, I, I just, I, I, I don't know where Grunt is. Is Grunt on Tuchanka? Because I, I don't want my adopted son around Reapers. I want him to be safe. What do you know about these females? They weren't fertile, so we used them as decoys to draw off enemies from the ones who were. But Malin's experiments changed that. These damn piejacks stole them right out from under us. Oh, that's a pretty brutal way to treat your women, Rex. The females suggested it. We've had to make a lot of tough choices to ensure we don't all die off. What a horrible way to live. It's just one more thing that'll get better when the genophage is cured. Damn, I mean... That was harsh, but I mean, if the ladies suggested it, like, hey, we're not fertile, we can't do anything. We'll, we'll act as bait so the ones who can better serve our society can live. Like, I, I, I take my hat off to those ladies. They're far braver than I. Are the Krogan ready to fight the Reapers? Ever since Sovereign showed up, I figured this day would come. My people have spent too much time selling ourselves out as mercenaries. Now we can get back to doing what Krogan do best, saving everyone else from giant monsters. Never going to let us forget about the Rachni Wars, are you? The last time I was at the Citadel, I didn't see a Turian statue in your honor. <laughs> Just wait till this war is over. <laughs> Okay, good stuff. It's been good talking to you again, Rex. It'll be even better when we have a few Solarians for lunch. Please stop provoking them. Please stop provoking them. We don't need an international incident on our hands. However, I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next one, hopefully we can track down those Krogan females. But until then... Please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.